Well, we've done a little wiring in the back here. We've got all but three terminals on our terminal strip taken care of, so we'll be finishing up that. We have our throttle to put in. So this is uh, wiring related to the throttle. This is wiring that won't be used in our application. So we're making progress. But what we're going to concentrate on now is finishing the front end. We got the instruments in place, but we need to wire them up. The wires are in place, they just need to be attached. But some of that um, is going to require our pack voltage to the front. And so that's coming through those two lines, the red and black one you see hanging in the back there. That's going to come up here and then branch from here and go back just a short ways underneath the driver's seat to our DC to DC converter. And they're coming forward here to a contactor for our heater. Actually there will be two of them. We've got two elements on our heater, dual element heater for high and low. And so what we're going to do right now is we put the spare tire rack back in place. We'll put the spare into place, raise it up, and we're going to confirm our clearances. We were talking about putting the pump for the heater right here. We want to make sure that uh, it doesn't interfere with the spare tire or you know there you know any problems with somebody uh, replacing a tire or something and um, causing an issue with any of the uh, components that we are adding so we're gonna do that first and then we're going to install our heater components and, uh, and then take off any wiring uh, from that uh, point where we've got our pack voltage forward here so to the DC to DC converter a line will go to the JLD 404 and so forth so that will all kind of come together and wrap up kind of simultaneously um, and then that will pretty much wrap us up in the front here for uh, component placement and wiring. We'll come back later and do our ABS block offs for the the grill, that type of thing. But that's not uh, crucial to the conversion at this point. So we save those things for later in the game. So that's kind of our immediate goal right now is to wrap up the front end then we'll go back to the back. Uh, we have the power steering to be installed still. Which will go on the right side of the motor here. We have that to install. Uh, so we have a, a, a mounting setup to do both for mounting the motor to the vehicle and for uh, mounting the the pump and uh, coming up with our drive system. So uh, there's that. Uh, and then the cooling for the controller. Those uh, and the throttle. Those are the three things really that uh, remain in the back here. Uh, we get those things taken care of and uh, and then we'll pretty much just be on the home stretch. After that we will go to our battery rack and start installing our batteries and wiring up our our pack uh, wiring interconnects. And then of course once that's done we can charge the pack 
and then uh, be ready for our testing phase. So stay with us. Well, here's a shot at the front end with the spare in place. It tucks up nice. And on the inside here, we still have plenty of room to put the few components that we're going to place here. We can see the area where we've talked about putting our, our pump. Looks like it should always be a spot without interference as the spare tire pretty much has to fit in this pan. So we'll take some still photos to be able to refer to. We'll do some marking while this is uh, spares in place. And we're good to go. Well, here's a shot with the plumbing in, in place. There's our heating reservoir back here. Here's the two elements. So electrical connections will be on the bottom there. They're behind the uh, front of the vehicle. Plumbing connections. One on top comes out this way. Goes to the heater valve. That was the stock component we're connecting directly to the vehicle's stock valve. And then we come out of the heater core to our pump. Again, directly to a hose that was already in place through our pump into our reservoir. So now we have to find a place to put the uh, solenoids. We moved the pump from our original uh, spot that we thought we might put it down over here. It's still in the lowest position in the circuit and this allowed us to make a couple less connections or yeah a couple less connections that we didn't have to splice into this stock plumbing. We hooked direct to the pump. So next we'll mount our solenoids, find a you know the locations for those and then wire it up which will include our dash switch and uh, our solenoids so we're gonna have a high and a low on this so when you turn on the dash dash switch one of our heating elements will be energized as well as our pump when you flip on the high which will be another switch which will switch between high and low when you hit that switch it will activate this second solenoid which will activate our second heating element giving them a high and low on the heating so let's do that alright there are the solenoids mounted now all that's left is to wire it up Well, here's something kind of interesting about the, uh, the Volkswagen Transporter, the Vanigans, and so forth. The brake and clutch reservoir is right here inside the panel with the instrument cluster. And so you have to remove this cover to access it. 
Well, we've kind of followed suit in that for the uh, fill for the heater, as we discussed earlier, the heater core is rather high up in here and it's the highest point and so we had to find a spot uh, for the fill and so we actually tied into the line right where it goes into the heater core brought a separate line up right here which allowed us to have a fill and a high spot to bleed air out of the system it took a little bit which a lot of these heater setups do take a little bit to bleed but we got all the air out of the system it's all buttoned up and so now this will just simply disappear and the uh, ashtray fits into place so that's the plumbing part of the uh, heater we still have the, uh, the high voltage connections to make and so we'll do that now the uh, low voltage stuff is all working and so uh, one more look here at the dash here's the instruments they're not uh, wired up yet they're just stuck in the holes just take a look and check the fitment we have the emergency stop button which uh, Oscar worked on we have the JLD 404 which is just uh, right at arm's reach and we have the uh, Curtis gauge which will give things like RPMs motor temperature controller temp so forth also allows us to uh, set up the uh, controller all this using the uh, menu button and then on the uh, right of that we have a 12 volt gauge so we can monitor the 12 volt system and our DC to DC converter so that's it nothing fancy just those gauges which are necessary to monitor our conversion. This is under the dash behind the glove box. And this is where we attached what I was mentioning earlier. This is where we tied into the uh, line that went to the stock heater core and then we brought up our fill and bleed line right there so here's a shot of the dash with everything in place we have the JLD 404 right here again we don't have our pack hook, hooked up so zero amp hours zero amps zero volts but below that we have the Curtis instrument and our volt gauge. So we'll turn on the key. And when we do, we see the 12 volt gauge come up. Our um, vacuum pumps running in the background. Here's the um, emergency stop button here's the uh, heater switch so our our one solenoid the, the low solenoid which turns on one of our heating elements comes on and then down here just below we have a switch that allows us to turn on that second solenoid and that gives us high heat so we got high and low on the heat then over here on the other side we have I can get an angle at it here 
and we have a switch that allows us to turn the power steering on and off. So normally you'd have that on when you turn on the key the power steering motor comes on but if for some reason you didn't want that motor going we're giving him the option to to turn it off. So that's the the dash of the Volkswagen double cab transporter. So now we still have uh, the wiring, the uh, high voltage wiring on the uh, heater to do, um, the DC to DC converter, and then the uh, front of the vehicle will be done. Then we'll be uh, finishing up on the rear. We have to install the power steering pump and motor. A little bit of wiring left to do back there. And then it will be installing the, the batteries in the treasure chest. We'll finish off our uh, video portion on the front of the transporter by showing you the finished heater setup. And so how it works is we have the switch in the dash, which we looked at earlier. It fits right in with these others. Again, it's the rear window defogger, emergency flashers, and the heater. When we turn on the heater switch, light comes on as a reminder that the heater's on. When we flip that switch, it sends 12 volts to our low relay here, as well as 12 volts to the pump. So when the dash switch is turned on, the pump comes on, and the low side of our heating reservoir comes on. We have two elements in the heating reservoir and we're, we're activating them individually. So we flip the dash switch, then one element comes on, heats the water in the reservoir, and it's pumped through the reservoir and through the stock uh, heater core uh, behind the dash. And so we, sh we showed you the fill in the rest of the plumbing setup. There is another switch in the dash which we will use to turn on the second heating coil and that's the heater high-low switch. So we switch that on high. That then activates the second relay or contactor and that provides power to the second heating element. So that allows us to have a high and low on the heater. Now also coming off of this, so uh, this is the line coming from our traction pack and it goes through the contactor and to the elements. So those two contactors now, the most positive side is connected together. So they both have power. When the contactor is activated, that power then goes to the heating element. We're also pulling power off at this same point, off of this one on the high side right here, and it goes back to our DC to DC converter. Negative side coming in here goes over to the negative side of our heating elements and those two are connected together on the negative side and then also coming from one of those is the negative side going to the DC to DC converter. The DC to DC converter is underneath the front passenger seat So here's the start.
stock 12 volt battery position goes underneath this cover and when the seat is slid back it is partially covered by the seat we've installed the DC to DC converter in this spot there's clearance between that and the bottom side of the seat so that high voltage line we showed you comes in comes to a relay this relay is switched on when the ignition is turned on so when the ignition turns on the relay contacts close it then sends power through the relay into our DC to DC converter and here's the ground return line that then starts our DC to DC converter and this will be uh, this through this Anderson connector it then connects to our positive and negative uh, posts on the battery and that basically replicates the alternator in your internal combustion vehicle it charges our 12 volt battery and it shares the load of our wipers and uh, um, headlights and so forth all of our DC and we monitor that through our 12 volt gauge that lets us know that the DC to DC converter is working if it's showing you know 14.6 volts we know she's charging shows us the state of charge of that 12 volt battery so that's it on the front end of the vehicle vehicle we will now continue the process in the back we've been working on our wiring board we have lines here that will be used for the throttle which is what we're going to be doing next the throttle comes through here this is the stock position we're going to retain that and so we're going to look at our options as far as mounting the throttle we need to support the bottom side of the controller so we're looking at possibly running something from the controller to this point right here that'll give us uh, a piece of angle from here to the controller which will stabilize the base of the controller so it won't have any movement and it will also give us an attachment point for the throttle in this area somewhere so we're going to get at it um, one other thing of note possibly here the pack voltage that we're using for our heater elements and the DC to DC converter originates here at our main contactor as you'll remember this is our our pack voltage coming in to the main contactor it goes through our service disconnect and then of course through the contactor to the controller so that's where we're pulling off the uh, pack voltage right there the negative side will come off the controller right here onto the throttle one other thing I want to mention about the front end here and I believe I've mentioned it previously and that is that behind the grill there's an upper and lower grill we're gonna have a, a, a piece of uh, black ABS so that will be blacked out that will help with uh, aerodynamics it'll keep us from getting cold air blown in over our heater components the uh, vent intake is just above here in its own separate housing so we're going to be blocked off to that point and down and then we'll go back on the side here uh, beyond our heater so that if this was involved in a fender bender and this is collapsed in we should have a barrier between our wiring 
and the sheet metal of the vehicle. Uh, we use a high impact ABS plastic for that purpose. So anyway, that's uh, uh, this piece comes out not going to be in play anymore and so that ABS will come completely across. Should look very nice. Uh, we're leaving the spare tire out uh, for the moment until we have all that in place just for ease of access then we'll reinstall the spare tire back into its normal position. Okay, for the throttle we've done something that achieves two objectives. So we're securing the bottom side of our controller and chill plate so it was secured at the top as we showed you previously we ran a piece of angle across the bottom which will allow us to attach our component board and it will be rigid on the bottom again we showed you the attachment on the top and then we're running a piece of angle from the controller back to the latch area here we simply took a bolt that we had left over from our disassembly of the uh, internal combustion layout that was longer than the uh, stock bolt that was here we needed a longer bolt so we just went through the hardware and found one and uh, voila another uh, stock bolt and we've given ourselves some clearance here and have given a, a rigid mounting for the chill plate and component board. We've attached a, uh, a, a ball and socket onto our throttle which will then attach to the throttle arm. But first we needed to know what throw was necessary so we took and marked what it was with the throttle off and with the throttle on the floor and measured that we had one and seven eighths inches of cable throw. So then we took our pot box, in this case we're using the Curtis PB6 pot box and we measured the throw based on the different holes. And we found that the second hole up from the bottom is almost exactly one and seven eighths inches of throw when we activate that. So that's the hole we'll go into. We're now simply going to place the uh, cable mounting in our lever arm there and then mark where we need to mount this front to rear mark our holes, drill it, mount it in place. Then it'll just be a matter of wiring up the pot itself and the uh, the micro switch. And for that we'll consult our schematic. Let's do it. Here's a shot of the pot box installed. Currently with the throttle on the floor. So that's the full throttle position. We'll release the throttle and show you the closed position. Here's the throttle in the closed position. So now we have to wire it up and the throttle will be complete and then we still have the cooling system for the controller and the power steering those are the last two hurdles once those two systems are complete the rest of it is just a matter of uh, 
installing the batteries, connecting them, doing a little cosmetic work, so forth. But we're getting close. So let's wire the throttle. Here's a shot of the completed throttle assembly installed. Now remember we still have wires to bundle and, and to loom and so forth so this is not the finished uh, you know, package yet but just to let you see what we've done we uh, installed our PB6 pot box right here. Here's the stock throttle. We don't have any rubbing or anything, any interference. Makes a nice smooth transition. And the wires from the potentiometer go up and through our board and to the uh, connections on the controller as per the schematic. We always recommend that you use a secondary throttle return spring and you can see we've done so here. We've also mounted the uh, wiring from the encoder up here kind of away from the motor. This is the wires from the micro switch on the pot box and they go to our uh, wiring and component board also. So let me show you a few, uh, few other details here. Okay, let's first take a look at the inside of a Curtis PB6 pot box. Been a fairly common throttle control over the years. And they're very simple. Mostly what you're paying for is, is the housing. Here we have it disassembled. This goes on the front and there's a cover piece. You turn it around and you see it's exactly what the name implies. It's a pot box. This is a potentiometer. Simply a variable resistor and when we move the lever we're changing the resistance. So according to our schematic we can see that we needed to connect uh, the wires as per this page right here that on the low side, the pot low, need to go to the purple and white wire and the yellow and white wire went to the wiper. Well, we happen to know what that is by looking at this pot box and we know that the uh, white is the low and the black is the wiper. So you always want to make notes when you're doing a project so that down the road you don't have to refigure everything. You know what, what you did. Now also uh, when using the pot box we need to connect the green and red wires to our um, little micro switch. And this is calling for red with blue. I don't know why. Because on our main schematic we can see that it is the red wire which also went up to our menu switch up in the dash. So the one wire connects to the red one, connects to the common and the green to the normally closed position of the switch. And so we can take a look using our own meter here and figure out what what's what. 
So I'm going to go to the two outside ones here. Probably can't see the meter. And I see that uh, I have continuity. And let's go to the center one. Nothing. So that tells me that this one's not the common and the middle one's not the common. So this one must be our common. So go to the middle one, open. Try that again. Lead on my uh, little uh, Harbor Freight cheapy meter here died. So I have uh, that'd be a normally closed position. Let me go to the center one here. So that's normally open. So we know then that this one is our common. The other far side is our normally closed. And the center ones are normally open. And then we'd, we're simply going to hook it up as specified on the schematic. And that's what you find right here. So, next up will be the controller cooling. We have to figure out where we're going to put the, the radiator, where we're going to put our reservoir, um, and the pump. So those three items need to be uh, installed and then wired and plumbed. We have our tubing already connected to the back side of our chill plate because once it's installed, very difficult to get to. Um, and so we installed that prior to installing the chill plate. So as I mentioned on an earlier video, the customer is sending us a aftermarket shifting setup, a cable shifting setup, and so I need to do a little bit of research and see how much room that's going to take and see what we have left in the cavity above the uh, transaxle. That's where we planned on putting the, the radiator. So see if we can find a home for that. Then we need to find a home for the reservoir that'll probably go up in this area here just because we want it to be a high point it'll be up out of the way remember this whole area is normally going to be covered we just have access now for the installation in normal everyday life that's the access through the back so you'd be able to look through the back there and, and check the coolant level shouldn't be something that needs attention very often other than an inspection and it gives us plenty of clearance for our uh, power steering so here's the power steering reservoir the motor will go here, the pump will go here and so that's uh, the main uh, components left to install and so we'll show you that in our next video. Hope you stay with us.